Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and this, like, I turned it down, but it seems really bright. It feels like I'm being interrogated, but we're gonna work with it. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. Um, I don't remember how to be a content creator anymore. I'm so bad at it, but we're gonna try. I'm gonna try to get through this. Nigel, say hi. Say hi, stinky baby. Say hi. This is Nigel the Grouch, my baby. But we're here to talk about fairy loot, but also Lumicrate and really all the book boxes and all of these special edition books. So I already made a video, and I'll link it, talking about fairy loot and because they released something new, well, they didn't release something new, but they came out with a, like a new division of books. And since then they have come out with yet another division of books. So I was talking about how I felt about fairy loot, other, some other people's thoughts about the quality of books going down. Like the books may be beautiful, but the writing isn't, isn't matching the look. And now with yet another category or whatever you want to call it, and they're not the only ones doing this. Illumicrate has different categories. It's just, it seems like it's getting out of hand. And my other video was saying gowns, beautiful gowns, because they're beautiful on the outside. I have one right here that I just got. I don't know anything about this book, but it's beautiful. Look at the naked hardcover. Fucking stunning, right? I don't know anything about this book. And no hate to this author, but I don't know if it's gonna be any good because I've gotten so many books that have been beautiful, mainly from Fairy Loot, and then I've tried to read them and they are, I mean, mediocre at best. So I asked on Instagram if people have sub to or purchased from any like Fairy Loot, any special edition box, Lit Joy Crate, um, Aluma Crate, Owl Crate their thoughts and their experiences. So let's see if hopefully <laughs> I can still pull up those answers and go over some of those. But I also asked, do you like that almost every book has a or multiple special editions or not? But I put oh, or nor. <laughs> um, and so the majority of people, 61% of people said nor, 26% said I don't care, and 13% said yes, so that they like that. Because someone, and I don't know if I mentioned this in my last video, and I know I'm not the only person to say it, and I feel like maybe someone said this to me, they don't feel special anymore. Before, back in the day, I feel like really before, I, jo I joined the bookish internet at the end of 2016, so that's my frame of reference. But before then, I feel like the majority of books they got a special edition. It was like a 10 year anniversary um, edition. It usually was like this book was out for a long time. It was cemented that it was well loved and then it got a special edition. And obviously um, 2016, that's when I joined Bookstagram. Well, I had been on Instagram, but you know, Bookstagram. And so obviously the industry picked up on that because there were beautiful covers here and there. There were special editions here and there, but it, but now it's like escalated. And then of course with the creation of Alcrate, Lit Joy Crate, Fade Crate, Aluma Crate, Fairy Loot, all of these different boxes competing against each other. Every single book has at least one special edition, if not multiple. And another thing someone was talking about, and it might be in the question responses I got on Instagram, is that a lot of these, some people subscribe to multiple of these boxes. And so a lot of times they're getting the same book. Maybe they're just designed different, but they're all getting the same book because it's a very popular book. There's so, there's so many books coming out that fit these different themes. Like there's lots of books coming out, but I don't know what their method is of going into picking the books, but a, a lot of time they do overlap. And so just, you're asking Jessica, what's the point of this video? It's just, talk, I'm just talking. <laughs> it's really to just talk about it because I like the responses from the other video. And after I had posted that when I was talking to a friend and I was like, hold on, you're making even more, <laughs> you're e making even more points that I didn't think of. So I want to discuss those and uh, share the feedback that I got from other people um, to discuss it more because it's just, I don't know, I have complicated feelings. So I said for science, if you subscribe to Fairy Lou, Illumicrate, Alcrate, etc., etc., have you noticed negative changes? If so, what? Quality of the book binding, cover design, book selection, let me know. So some of the answers I have, scroll back to the beginning, um, that uh, someone from Illumicrate, 
who subs to Illumicrate said the book's picks haven't been great in the last year. They mentioned a book, Red Scholar's Wake was so bad. Someone is else says I think adults are the people that can afford the book the boxes but the books and items are for teens and I feel this because fairy loot the one I subscribe to is supposed to be adult only box like book so it's just the book and some of the books which you this can go into a whole other conversation of what exactly is YA and I'm not straying there today but some of the books do not they feel like they're intended for a younger audience and not adult only. So I really do agree with that one, especially the boxes that have items in it. I know some people find them useful. I rarely ever get boxes like that because it just ends up being more stuff that ends up sitting around. But I mean, I agree with that one. My issue is mass production. Like how can I afford all these special editions? Don't get me started on the bookish box and how slow they are at moving products, but keep making more. Another great point because every time a book comes out especially if it's more popular it's gonna have a Illumicrate edition, a Fairy Loot, uh, Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Target edition like and obviously no one is being forced to purchase any of these but naturally you're gonna have FOMO and it's just like it's not special anymore if there are six different editions of every other book that comes out and then I know a lot of the book boxes have had several or various controversies like the bookish box um but also owl crate they've all had their thing right someone said owl crate quality is consistently good sometimes the sprayed edges stick together but no big deal fairy loot is both my favorite and least favorite adult book choices aren't very good in quality and consistent my friend also said this about her books saying that the binding has been going down like some of the books that she gets looks like like if she opens them too wide or you know actually reads the special edition like it might the binding might break some I've heard from some people that on some of their special editions like if it has any kind of like gold I don't know what you call it flaking or something or or anything on the cover that sometimes they, they it's flaking off or some of the color on the cover it's flaking off so I have heard that from various people with fairy loot um and maybe with Illumicrate I'm not sure but that's not the first time I've heard that uh someone said I hate the dig digital signatures have become a thing I would prefer no signature because digital signature does not mean signed and that's fair I never cared too much about signed books but it does make it is less special when it just is printed and not actually signed by the author. Um, limiting skips, fairy loot. And this is a big thing that annoys me as a fairy loot subscriber that you only have like maybe three, maybe four. And I understand they're like, well, you have the subscription, but also there's people on the wait list. So if I didn't want this month by the hint that you're giving for the book, why not make that spot available to someone who actually would want it? I don't know. It's complicated. Again, I have complicated feelings because I don't want to cancel the subscription because then that's exactly when they're going to be starting. It'll be like three books in a row that I really want. That's what's going to happen. So right now I I'm staying. Okay. Um, so many fairy loot special edition sequels coming out at once. I can't afford that on top of the monthly box. Facts, facts, facts. Also something that's frustrating if because you want yours to match. So if they're releasing the sequel and then you, you were sub to Fairy Loot, but now you're not sub to Fairy Loot, now your books will match. I know people would be like, wow, this is not that important. But we're talking about the book turnet here and these things matter to people. They matter to me. I like my books to match, so I get it. And so in my last video, I talked about the new thing that Fairy Loot introduced. It was called Iron Editions. So they said that they were going to go back to books they had done in the past but bring them back and make it better. So they're making another special edition of some books that they are doing in the past. The first one is the Red, the original Red Rising trilogy. There was a lot of opinions about this. A lot of people excited because they didn't get the get they didn't get to get the original special edition that they did. And a lot of people like, why are you doing something else when you should focus on the quality of the books you already have? Which I agree with. Now they also have, and I believe Izzy from Happy For Now, I'll link her video, I'm pretty sure she talked about it. Now they have a romanticy division. Uh, so that's fantasy romance because that has really had a surge over the last couple of years. 
And so now they're having a box that's, I believe that the box is dedicated to romance or romantic fantasy, fantasy romance, whatever. I have to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure that's another subscription. And then there was drama there because they had talked about this months ago. So people had signed up for the wait list, but then they were saying that the um, first slots were gonna go to people who were already subscribers and people were like, well, why did I sign up for the wait list? So then they made it equal. So it's just like equal to anybody. I think it's a mess. It's a mess. Um, like I said before, they all come out with different editions of the same book. Fairy loose sprayed edges have just been boring and just the original cover, which I didn't even notice. And some of them, like this one, it isn't. This is the cover. Now, I don't know what the original cover was, but there's like this beautiful bird on the side. Um, another one, which, oh no, that's not. This is, I believe this is the fairy loot one of Amina Al Sarafi, and the edges are a little different. But I have noticed that that some of them are like I had one that I sold, I believe it was by Chloe Gong and it literally was just the cover on the spine and I think this one is too. It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Forged by blood, which I heard is just another beautiful gown, but it is just that on the sprayed edges, which is not terrible. It's beautiful, but they have been more creative in the past. I like this one. It's kind of just like the waves on the side. So that's valid, you know? Uh, Fairy Loot Adult disappointed in the pics and custom edges just being copied straight from the covers. I feel like that's a very common complaint about Fairy Loot pics. The adult books have been more misses than hits, definitely. Fairy Loot is trash with shipping. Um, damaged books from Fairy Loot in their adult subscription. Um, Fairy Loot has cut down on the number and quantity of items to make books prettier, but book quality has lowered this year. All Crate has good quality items and has been working on their customizations and are solid. Hmm. Fairy Loot def definitely negative changes. Barely get tracking when things ship. Been sent the wrong book. Received several damaged books. Fairy loot, the quality of Hotterscape and Penguin going down, but I blame the publisher, not Fairy Loot. Um, oh yeah, someone's saying they got an Illumicrate box um, that had the foil come off in their hands before they ever read the book. Most of the book selections are boring. Those were the majority of the comments because some of them repeated. Um, someone said in Owlcrate, the items in the young adult box have grown useless and cheap. And yeah, so those are the general uh, feelings and I, and I feel a lot of those even though I only subscribe to one and so it I guess my question is like when is it too much or like when is it enough when are, is this ever going to stop because it doesn't feel special anymore I think like um Goldsboro their books feel more special because when they do a special edition it's literally like maybe 500 books they're numbered they're signed it's a limited printing um, and they send you your packages really well packaged. I mean, they, they use an excessive amount of bubble wrap, but I usually save it and repurpose it when I'm selling books and shipping them. So that feels more special. I think the Broken Binding also has done, at least with their subscription, it's completed series for the most part. So it's something that you, if you've already read it, it's not like a brand new book because a lot of times with these Illumicrate, well for most of the times so with Illumicrate and Fairy Loot, they're new releases and Broken Binding has been doing a lot of uh, books that are already have been out or the series is finished. However, comma, I will say that something I've noticed with Fairy Loot is that I'm a subscriber, right, to their box. And so normally you get an email for anything, even if it's not in the box. So like you would get first you get like the pre-sale if they're doing a special edition outside of the box. And I don't always get that email. And there was one that I was so pissed that I missed because I was planning to buy it and I never got that email. So their communication has been very hit or miss because sometimes I get emails about sales or special editions that are going on sale and sometimes I don't. And that makes me mad because then you know people get them and they resell them for an exorbitant amount of money and I am not paying. I have limits. I will not be paying ridiculous amounts of money for a single book. And I mean, we could also lump in Sarah Janet in this one because her new book literally I think has like five different editions and each one has a different bonus story in it. So it's not like the publishers are naive to this. Like they know exactly what they're doing and I'm really sick of it. Like it was fun in the beginning and you're like, Jessica, you're contributing to the problem. I know, but at least I'm self-aware. But 
it's gotten out of hand. I wish Fairy Loop before they did this Iron Editions, before they did this fantasy romance thing, would look at the feedback that they're getting on their posts. I'm sure people email them and really hone it in. Be pickier with the books that you're choosing for your book box. Um, be, you know, get on the people who are binding and printing the books. Like make them worth the money because these things are not cheap. Another thing is it is pissing me off about fairy loot and some of these other subscription ones is that you're paying for this subscription you paying every month for this subscription but then the books you really want are not included in the subscription you have to buy those separately and the ones in the subscription are books you're like oh i haven't heard of this i don't even know i even want it now i understand they're trying to platform and give more recognition to newer authors or authors who maybe wouldn't have as much attention on them if it was just published like just straight to the shelves and not any special edition i get it i get it but this goes back to what i was saying in my other video about beautiful gowns is that the writing in these books have not been good oh and so i'm like here's three boxes in a month where i've never heard of this book i don't care about it i've heard terrible things about it i start reading it it's boring or it's not well written and then you're like, oh, we're releasing a special edition of this, this book I've already read and loved and know I want. So I feel like in their adult subscription box, I wish it was at least a mix between new releases and backlist because I feel like with backlist, I, there's obviously it's been out longer, had a chance to read it or maybe know that I don't want it and skip that month. Oh, I just, are these companies taking surveys? Are they taking feedback? Or they just don't care? They just keep pumping it out because people give them money because things are pretty. I don't know. I know I'm part of the problem. I like pretty things. I cannot lie. In this economy, in this cruel, cruel world that we are in, sometimes, not sometimes, getting that box in the mail, opening it up to see a beautiful book literally saves me from the deep end like I'm not lying to you and I know other people are like that and maybe with different things like looking for having something come in the mail that's not a bill is like a boost to my mental health and I know it's like well then there's a downside of spending the money but I literally if the package gets delivered early in the morning I will set it by my door and I won't open it because it get, I'm like, I can make it through the work day. I can make it through the work day so I can open that box. And you may say that is so pathetic. That is so sad. But the depression is real over here. And sometimes, oftentimes, that is something that saves me that day. That is so fucking dramatic, but I'm not lying. So I'm not saying I want all these companies to stop what they're doing. I just want them to be better. I want them to think about it a little bit more, change it up and not just do all of these new releases because I want, you know, authors of all different backgrounds to get attention and I want their books to be out. But I feel like so much of the special edition game, so much of publishing is pushing these front lists, which is obviously impossible to keep up with when there's so many amazing things that have come out before that also deserve special edition love. So those are my complicated feelings <laughs> with that. Beautiful Gowns part two. I would love to know your thoughts and experiences with any of these companies. And if you have any ideas of like positive ways it could change, I would love to hear that. Or what you think, do you think there are more negative changes coming? Or I would just love to hear all your thoughts because um, it was really, uh, I really love the comments under the other video that I did. So would love to see that. No screeching in this one. However, I'm still mad because capitalism ruins lives and this late stage capitalist hell that we are living in is literally the fucking worst. It's like, yeah, hell is on earth. <laughs> you know, it was like, Ooh, baby, do you know that we're... No, heaven is not a place on earth. Hell is a place on earth. Hell is earth. Earth is hell. It is hell here. Okay, that was it from me. So like, subscribe, tell your friends about this video. I don't know, I'm so bad at this, but I want you to stay moisturized, hydrated, and sunscreen. I don't know if I said that in the right order because I'm out of practice, but that is gonna be all for me at this moment. Goodbye.